Hello guys, I have got such a treat for you guys today. And a treat for me, because I'm really excited about this one. But before we get on to the exciting thing, could I ask if you press the like button, which is there or there, depending on what you're watching on. And press the subscribe button if you haven't already. It really makes a big difference to us. In the YouTube algorithm things, massive difference. It means we can make better content for you guys. And that's good. Also, if you feel like it, leave a nice comment because you're going to want to comment on the thing that's over there that you can't see yet. And you know, share the video with other people because other people want to see this thing. I can't promise the review will be any good, but the vehicle is amazing. I know, right? I found one of James's shirts. Now I'm doing this thing properly. And this, look at this. This is, or I should say, this was a Ford 65 pickup. And obviously, it's American. It is amazingly cool. And I bet that you guys have noticed that massive air scoop cut into the bonnet, which gives you some idea that this might not be a standard pickup truck. And there, my friends, you would be right. This is not standard at all. This is the body but it's been put onto an American-built custom drag chassis built by a firm called Morrison's, not the supermarket. So the big question for everybody is what's actually under the hood? No, it's American, so it's a hood. Well, um, ah, yeah, right. That's surprisingly easy. Oh. That doesn't stay up. Fine. We're going to do this casual-like for the rest of this. In here we have a six and a half litre V8, which is just bonkers. It's, this is the kind of size of vehicle that demands an engine of this size because it takes up most of the engine bay. What a beast. So this beast of an engine develops around 465 bhp when it was last dynoed. But since then, it's had a new gearbox with a new shifter put into it and so we have no idea what difference that's going to make to how this works. Regardless to say, it puts out a silly amount of power, especially for, well, what this truck should have. And it just screams power, that angry looking air scoop, everything a bit shiny and cool. And you're like, oh, ho, 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 this is gonna be special. It really is special. Look at that. Oh, it's cool. This thing screams America from the 1960s. This pale blue paint job that's been deliberately weathered slightly, which I must point out the new owner isn't a fan of. This amazing chrome on the front, the, the chrome bumpers, the white wall tires. Oh, it's just, it all works so amazingly well together. It's just beautiful. And it's, it's again, it's from that time where everything was kind of sculpted to look big and powerful and beautiful. And, of, it's the aerodynamic styling that isn't really aerodynamic. And coming back to here, this vehicle is hugely practical. Look at all this space. I've slept in beds smaller than this. I've stayed and I've visited people at university who have rooms smaller than this. Oh, we could, you could take anything in this. So I lied. The cargo capacity on this is uh, somewhat limited. This isn't a an original truck anymore, I suppose, and uh, that shows. So we've taken the cover off, which makes it look like a regular truck, which then brings us to this access hatch here where we can get to the rear diff, which also shows us the chassis rails are now these bits here and the other side. The rest of it lower down, well, uh, that's just body panels now to make it look normal. This really is quite a different vehicle now. And looking down that way, it's a very, very different chassis. In fact, the most notable part you can see are the exhausts coming off it. This really has been made just to go in a straight line quite fast. Yeah, it's a, that's a little bit different to what I was expecting looking in there. What a place to be. This, this is the most American I've felt ever, including when I was in America. This is how you expect a stereotypical American vehicle to be. Bench seat, which is more comfortable than my couch. And this amazing dash. 
with this beautiful stickered Muriel, I think we'll call it. I'm not really sure what else to call it. Design. It's an uh, interesting design. But it's cool. It's very American. It's designed to look American, I suppose. And this amazing control system with these wonderful pull-out buttons. Everything's pull-out and wonderful. The lights are pull-out. The wipers are a nice little, a nice twisty thing. Lovely choke. You, you don't need more than this. You don't need fancy toggle switches and dials and plasticky things. You need chrome and simple controls. This is how it should be. The steering wheel is definitely an aftermarket edition. That doesn't look very original. Seeing GT Grant on it also, probably not an original uh, part of the vehicle, but yeah, size weight's fine. It does, doesn't detract from anything. But I, I love it in here. It's just cool. Apparently, we're also doing 30 miles an hour. I'm going to wager that the speedo doesn't work. Now, obviously, this truck is still a work in progress. The roof lining here still needs uh, a little bit of adjustment and maybe something rather than just the cardboard being put onto it. And the her shifter here also needs finishing. For instance, the cover goes on. We'll just put that back. That's fine, we can see the inner workings of it, and that's, that adds to the feel of this vehicle. So this is here at my friend's, because it's had a new automatic gearbox put into it. But that's to work with this. So it's a automatic gearbox, which is no longer automatic. So it's a manual automatic gearbox? Yeah. The system works interestingly on, like a race car, because it's designed for drag racing. This is a custom-built drag machine. So the shifter is meant to work on uh, the automatic system, so it's a quicker gear shift, it's a thunk, and the gear is gone, rather than a <coughs> there we go. I haven't actually ever used one of these before, and I'm told that when you head around it, it's really easy. Hmm. Then uh, the other little addition that you don't normally have is the big gauge here, which is a, a rev counter. The other notable thing in here is the lack of any way to get out. Once you're in, you're stuck in the vehicle forever until you wind down the window, put your arm outside and open from the outside. But I think that's part of the charm of this. And then here, this little box, that's for air ride. Because we can slam this down and then we can be cool with all the kids. Or we can actually pick it up so you can drive it like a normal vehicle. But that is actually cool and watching what it can do to the truck is, well, cool. So, I think we should take this out. to be able to say just how amazing it is. It's, I, just, I don't, I can't, I'm failing as a reviewer here to be able to successfully review the sensation. I think it's like how the Power Rangers feel when they get into the Megazord, it's that kind of start, kind of feel of power. It's just, <laughs> wow. Downside, ride quality. Yeah, that's that's um. I don't think the ride quality actually exists. It's it's quite rough. It's quite fancy. It's. It's designed for a straight line and a bit of road like this. It's not really designed for back road. 
You can feel it. He just doesn't like it at all. Other downside, brakes. Brakes are not good. Also, it's a left foot braking, and it's automatic. The brake pedal has been moved right over for my left foot. And it is a very, very strong left foot braking that's required on this. One has to be quite firm and tell the brake pedal and the car that it is going to stop. And it will. But one does have to be quite firm. There's quite a lot of things that knock around in here and rattle. It's certainly not a tranquil place to be. But it is amazing. This, this is a vehicle that I would have. behind me though which gives me very good visibility behind which that's good i like that that is pretty good i just the main thing that i can see next to the super sized rev counter in front of me is the ridiculously big air ram that just dominates my vision and makes me go yes kind of noise it's just I understand why the Americans love this so much it makes total sense now God bless the United States of America if this is the kind of thing that they come up with there is no refinement on this at all it's about as far away as you can get from well anything that I've ever driven everything else I've driven has kind of got a precision speed a precision feel to it this is a, this is just power. This this is the kind of vehicle that Jeremy Clarkson wets himself thinking about. It's just straight power and going for it. The sensation of driving a left-hand drive car through an area that I'm very familiar with is quite strange. It's, I've adapted it quite well. I've driven left-hand drive stuff before, but never over here. And on these little Suffolk country roads, this is a remarkably big vehicle. Like, silly big vehicle. Like, comparatively to driving my 106, I'm basically in the back seat of the 106. That is massive. There's so much car behind me. Just silly big car. But it's American, I suppose that's what it's all about. It's having a big, big vehicle. What a beast! What an absolute beast. if I put the power down it would just cannonball off in a straight line rather than where you want it to. 
trying to maneuver it earlier to do drive bys. Boy, it does, it does not like sharp corners. You can feel it slipping and skipping from the front end as that back end just tells it, no, no, we're going this way. out that junction. Front tires squeal. So they push sideways. So they just they don't want to deal with this. They don't want to deal with going around corners. They just want to go straight. And the noise I combined with that power. I, I would not daily this. I'm telling you right now, this is not a suitable daily car. But it is the car that you take around town. Everybody looks. Everywhere we go, everybody looks at this. Absolutely everybody has a look. Everyone smiles, you get a wave. It's... Yeah, it gets the attention. It is, uh, it is not subtle in any shape or form. It's, it's kind of vehicle that makes the fire engines look subtle and quiet. It's also the kind of car that I'm discovering that I wouldn't want to take very far because as lovely as the noise is, it's getting quite loud and it's still quite loud. Even doing less than 50 miles an hour down the A140, I'm using it where, like, 2,000 revs doing nothing. And this is about as quiet as it gets. So we're actually really fortunate to be able to have a look at this and have a go at it. Is one of the owner's plans for this is that he's going to take the engine out and break it rather than continue using it take it on he's had a change of part so it might not actually be around that long how amazingly lucky and fortuitous I happen to be in the right place at the right time to be able to have a go at this I just, I've never felt this sensation out of anything. I just, unbelievable. It's just completely and utterly unbelievable. I would definitely, definitely have one of these. There's room for one of these, definitely in my collection, that's for sure. I'm so antisocial! I've never... Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, it's, it's back onto the B roads and uh, onto a ride that's not um, particularly comfortable anymore. like 
like this. Because it is just such a sensation. The proper gives you gives you the fizz. And I can feel it in my tummy and I don't know if that's excitement or fear. It's one of the two. It's just the kind of car that you want for a dinner party. Your friends come over and see it on your driveway, take them out for a quick spin round. Do that. Go in, have a dinner party, talk about how cool it is. That's all it's here for. I mean, I would truly, truly love to see it on a drag strip. That would be amazing to actually see it do what it's meant to do. And I, the noise would just be. I haven't even put this anywhere near where it's meant to go because I'm scared. I'm proper scared of it. If this was not a bone dry day, this review would not be happening. I do not think it would go, even at five miles an hour, I don't think it would go around a bend. This is the car I feel wants to kill me most out of anything. I just, I can't, <laughs> it's, it is evil this, it's actually, that is the best way to describe this vehicle. It is evil. That is a black heart beating in there, a black evil heart. Now that will take everyone, doesn't matter, woman, child, you're all the same to it, it will kill you. I think it's amazing and I love it for it. So, I want to say thank you guys for watching. I'm going to carry on and just keep making some noise. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. See you later.